Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's actually 12 already. It's almost lunchtime. Welcome to BASF at K22. Welcome to our Plastics Journey. And welcome to my two Go-Creator talkers here this morning. Stefan Gröhl from S17 and Andreas Wolny from BASF. Um, Stefan, I read the exhibitor list of K22. S17 is not in there. What are you doing at KFair? Yeah, S17 is a software startup company. Okay. And what we do is we implement digital material certificates to trace material quality and sustainability data alongside um, industrial supply chains. Okay, yeah. so it's your first time? At first time at FAIR and it's of course really impressive to, to see the whole industry yeah. basically in one location. Yeah, super exciting. Fantastic, and we're very happy uh, to have you. you. You mentioned digital material twins, certificates. Why is that important? Well, um, you know, the, we, we, we have a um, future where more and more digital solutions and also automatization is becoming relevant. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, digital solutions are depending on data. Mm -hmm. So what we provide is material data. Andreas, um, the, the link, I mean, we're talking about the digital part of that. How important is that in order to actually make the sustainability contribution tangible or, or provable? Yeah, so we, we have many data within BSF, uh, but normally we share it by PDF or by Excel files with our customers. Really? But if we want to bring forward now uh, reduced product carbon footprints or increased recycled contents, we need other ways to be efficient and to exchange the data. Mm -hmm. That's why we are looking in the digital twins. I was, uh, I'm, I'm a bit amazed to hear that, I mean, it's 2022 and we're still exchanging those data via, via Excel sheet. Isn't there yeah. another way to do this? That, that is exactly what we are trying to do. We, we try to define a standard which is accessible and usable for everyone uh, because that today there is no digital standard. So there are paper standards mm -hmm. and uh, they are used in the PDFs. And what we try together now with S17 is to come up with a new standard as a digital solution to exchange all the data in a digital way that the customer can process the data right away. Mm -hmm. Is this, Stefan, is this a, a growing field? I mean, I can imagine that almost every producer of any product will need something like this in the future. Yeah, certainly, yes. I mean, I'm personally coming from, the, I have a metals background and we uh -huh. also started our activities in the metal space. Um, but basically, we see that development for any kind of industrial materials. So mm -hmm. speaking about steel, aluminum, copper, and of course, engineering plastics. Yeah. So what does the actual COA contain? What, what data is included in there? Well, at the moment, it's, um, it's all the technical lot-specific data. Mm -hmm. So it would be the chemical analysis, it would be the mechanical properties. And in future, maybe it will also contain um, the sustainability performance mm -hmm. of a material. Because mm -hmm. in our consideration, sustainability is just another dimension of a material's quality. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we've been talking about in a number of creator talks, actually, that those data become a new technical feature. Would you agree? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think it becomes more and more relevant not only to have the mechanical properties, but also sustainability information to take a decision what material fits best for an application. Mm -hmm. I mean, BASF has, has calculated the uh, um, product carbon footprint for uh, 45,000 sales products. Is this also something that goes into the COA? That is something we are thinking about. So what, okay. we, what we started is we took the, the, the typical certificate and you can see it also on the screen mm -hmm. how it looks like. Um, there you have mechanical properties and some uh, testing data. Uh, but as we exchange that with every delivery to our customers, that would be a, a perfect way also to exchange sustainability information uh, or information about recycled content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stefan, how can uh, customers switch from the old way to the new way? Is there any kind of transition process included? Yes, I mean, we thought from the beginning about this question and yeah. we, we followed a, some sort of a fade-in process. Mm -hmm. That's why you see that the PDF is still there um, and that allows actually a customer to smoothly switch from the existing process to then the machine-readable standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we kept what we call reverse compatibility to the existing process. Ah, okay, yeah, I, I get yeah. that. And, and what does a customer actually do with that COA in the end? Yeah, so today the customer received the COA and some type the values in, in their systems, so they, they just copy the values and put it in their systems. Uh, some uh, just keep it and by sharing the data in a digital way with the customer, they can use it directly in their system. So we are currently also doing pilot projects with equipment suppliers mm -hmm. that, for example, you share the information with a dryer or with an injection molding machine mm -hmm. and then the equipment can adapt to the parameters of the product and uh, you can then steer the process more efficiently. Oh, no. 
Stefan, working with companies like BASF or others, you mentioned that there is a big push towards uh, that, that direction. Do you also uh, encounter some uh, kind of doubts or hesitancy to go so transparent? Well, I mean, at the moment, we don't increase the transparency because, yeah. I mean, we actually, the supplier keeps in full control on what kind of data he provides. And mm -hmm. what we see very often is that it's also product and sometimes even customer specific. So we don't, uh, we don't change that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, Andreas, I, I know that um, the digital aspect of sustainability is a topic that is really close to your heart. Tell us why that is so important. I mean, we can talk a lot about sustainability, but it will never work if it's not based on a solid digital foundation, right? Exactly. So if we want to help our customers to achieve their targets, and, and many customers have a, a reduction of product carbon footprint or recycled content, um, and in many cases we are in very complex value chains. So there are several tiers in between, and uh, I'm convinced that we need digital tools to, to share that information because today it's more siloed and it's very difficult to share the information. So we need uh, uh, open standards like we are developing here uh, that everybody, also our competitors, can, can use this, the same approach and can share the data in the same way. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise I think we will not be able to reach all the goals for, for sustainability. Is this also something you expect regulation to come in? Will, will there be a defined standard for doing this? Well, I mean, we, we sort of implemented the existing regulatory standard for mm -hmm. certificates of analysis. Mm -hmm. And we work closely also with the regulatory bodies mm -hmm. that, for instance, for steel and metals are just redefining the standard. Mm -hmm. And our company is also part of the working group at the European okay. level. Yeah, so okay. we kind of uh, provide also our working results to that group. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about our plastics journey, and this is an important element of, of the plastics journey. When did your journey in this field of business actually start? Well, it started quite some time ago. Okay. Like it was around in 2018 and 19 okay. when I first came up with that idea. Uh, but then it took me, I would say, another one and a half years to really get it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we are um, developing the solution since actually two years in a very, very close uh, collaboration with BSF. And uh, we are super happy to have it now live and bring it out to the customers. What's the, the biggest challenges that you have right now or also looking to the future? Stefan, start with you. Um, well, I think there is a, is a number of challenges. I mean, what, what we speak about or um, what we also just heard from and Andreas is that um, sustainability is very much linked to digitization because mm -hmm. what we understand is that no company can be sustainable alone. So basically we have to align targets um, for whole value chains mm -hmm. and, and that requires digitization and when you speak about digitization uh, we need data and we need to share data and uh, we see that a lot of companies are not yet prepared for mm -hmm. that so that that is a that is an, uh, a challenge that has to be tackled uh, but also we see a lot of initi initiatives that are are taking on that so for instance Catena X in the automotive industry I think it's a brilliant example mm -hmm. yeah. you mentioned a lot of companies are not prepared is BASF prepared well, I hope that we are uh, prepared, yeah. uh, but uh, I think it's, it's a different mindset because uh, in the past we relate on established processes mm -hmm. and now it's about completely new processes, uh, new requirements and um, that's why we are inviting also others to, to join the initiatives uh, to create these standards uh, jointly mm -hmm. um, that uh, everybody is prepared uh, for, for that journey. Okay, okay. Um, Stefan, you mentioned Catena X um, and I give that to uh, Andreas now. Uh, Tell us a little more about Catena X, which is also present here at the show. You're deeply involved in this. What's it all about? Yeah, so uh, BSF is part of uh, Catena X. So Catena X is, uh, um, uh, as we call it, an open and collaborative data ecosystem for the automotive industry. So it's mm -hmm. an initiative from the OEMs, from Volkswagen, Mercedes, uh, BMW, but also raw material suppliers like BSF and Henkel and mm -hmm. tiers like Bosch and Scheffler. And uh, we are working exactly on the same topic, on, on the standardization of data exchange. So how can we share data across the value chain? Uh, how can we make sure that everybody speaks the same language, that every, everybody has the same understanding? And uh, one of the use cases we are working is that we are developing a rule book for the automotive industry mm -hmm. on how to calculate the product carbon footprint of a car. So we are on a raw material level. Uh, but from, from us to the car, there are many steps uh, in between. Yeah. And what we are trying now to define is a process on how to calculate the product carbon footprint for a complete car. Oh, that's interesting. And how are you involved in Catena X? 
I mean, well, the solution that we developed together could could be the material passport, so to say, that okay. caters into the product passport mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. of uh, automotive part. Yeah. yeah. Coming back to the to the question of um, transparency and of the willingness also to share data, I can imagine that that could be an issue in the automotive industry, yeah, because also the OEMs they are very fond of having their own products, their own yeah. data. Is is this something that you encounter, Andreas? Yeah. And uh, there's also a technical solution. So it's a it's a peer to peer network. So you mm -hmm. only share data with your customers or with your suppliers. Okay. Okay. So there's no absolute transparency, and you cannot go to a platform and look up all the information. So mm -hmm. you're just part of a transaction, and there you share the information. And uh, I think this is also very important to 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 have the acceptance because uh, no one wants to disclose uh, the suppliers or all the data. And that's why there's an, in Catena X also a technical solution that you only have a peer to peer exchange, and you keep control okay. of your data. Okay. Um, Stefan, I'd like to close the talk with uh, one question. I mean, K-Fair only happens every three years. Yeah, We're now in 2022. If you're going to come back in 2025 and we're going to have the same talk, what will we be talking about? Well, I hopefully talk about that um, our solution has been actually multiplied horizontally yeah, mm -hmm. because um, it was built from the beginning as an, with an open core approach. So, so yeah. The core of our solution is open source, so everyone and everybody of the uh, plastic supply chain can use our data format, can enhance it, and of course serve uh, its customers with machine-readable data. So hopefully in three years uh, we will see a standard <laughs> that a lot of companies are using. Yeah. Put that in the calendar, definitely. <laughs> Andreas, what, what are we going to be talking about three years from now? Well, post, most probably we also speak about Catena, which will be then operational and okay. uh, mm -hmm. hopefully a success. And uh, probably all we also speak about the digital certificate of analysis and how that is used uh, within the plastics industry with equipment suppliers, other raw material suppliers and also our customers. I'm already starting to take some notes so that I'm prepared when we meet back in 2025. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for the insights into digital material twins, into certificates of analysis, and how does it all connect with Catena X, the network. Stefan, Andreas, thanks a lot. Thank you. BASF. We create chemistry.